In this video, I'm gonna review the final table from yesterday, which was the 109 battery dial final table with 10k up top. There were some crazy ICM faults I had to make, other champs I missed out on, so it's gonna be an interesting review, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's go. So yeah, we have a clear fault here. I'm still surprised that we can jam that wide, to be honest. Especially like in a suited region, to be honest. Like, I think, like, I mean, it makes more sense, obviously, in some regard. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're going to go, like, I'm going to throw some of that stuff out. Some of these that are barely profitable. Still wider than I expected it to be. Insane how you push any two. That's not me, that's a small blind. Small blind, he can jam any two, which makes a lot of sense, obviously, because like big blind cannot call with like ace king, for example, or like ace check at least. Given that they have 8, 11, 16, 16, you know, like he can jam any two profitable, which is like fairly obvious, I think. It's not that people take it. I would I'm not sure if it's better to like open jam any two here for 30 bigs or just go for raises. I told you then I was considering something anyway, yeah. Tell us you did easy jam, man. It's like tough. Pretty interesting. So what are the icing ranges? I don't think the small blind is gonna ice that tight, to be honest. Like I think he's certainly gonna be wider than that in that regard. Gonna throw this in there, and now we can calculate some more. You know, and this is like more what it looks like and what I would actually jam, and I think this is much more reasonable. Dude, I'm on point. Dude, I'm on point. Holy shit, this is exactly what I would jam in this spot. This is. Wow. I might jam King Ten Suited though. But damn. Are there some good starter materials for ICM or similar? Check out ICM, ICM, man. It's for free. You have th like when I started playing, I did. Like, you have three free calculations a day. That's what I did like every day to use my three so I don't have to pay those 100 bucks because I didn't have to roll for that. As soon as I had to roll, I instantly bought it and did some math from there. That's what it is, obviously. I mean, the thing, like, I mean, you can see how profitable chance is. We can, like, quickly look at that. But, yeah, this is, like, so what we see here pretty clearly is, um, wait, let me open up Chatty. I want to do, like, a quick, um, I mean, I'm just going to take pictures here, to be honest. Screenshots. So this is the, um, I had ace 8 off in that spot, so just going to take a screenshot. So yeah, RGM 5 still to lose I guess, I mean you lose not that much money, 130 is not that much. You're winning $260 by jamming aces, which is decent. You're just winning that by jamming. On average you win 260 bucks by jamming aces there guys. <laughs> Pretty sick. But yeah, I think like this is fairly accurate for this spot. I thought it might be slightly tighter to be honest, but yeah. I mean, he might be ice wing wide on 12%, you know, like, let's let's throw in some, like, a little wider range on his end as well. Um, I mean, it really depends, man, how, how wide he would hunt a bounty here. You know? I mean, we can see how this works out. I doubt this would call, but just, yeah, it's ex interesting to experiment. But even then, you should be jamming these hands, so yeah, it's pretty easy, 6 is 8 plus, ace 8 suited and king queen. Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. Big Blind might be calling slightly wider as well versus my jam. You know, I don't think he's necessarily folding those. Let me just see like how the range, the range narrows down to like ace ten zero and ace check off at this point. You know, so we we, we it, like these are spots, these spots they don't come down if you like start jamming ace ten zero and start folding ace ten zero. But like, just get a rough idea of what you're su supposed to jam in these spots. And be really close, you know, if you're jamming like ace dudes off on the button, or like ace five off there on the button, you're just like, we're losing way too much money. But if you're going to jam like ace nine zero or the ace eight zero now instead of the ace ten zero plus, it doesn't really matter because those ranges are like still like fairly variable and it's tough to like give opponents like an exact range there. I played yesterday was the first time I watched your stream and I was very impressed. Well played overall, didn't agree with some of the spots, but good to see you reviewing now. Thanks, man. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I like doing. <laughs> so yeah, this is the first hand. Wait, I want to more chatty so I can make like a timestamp because I'm going to upload this entire thing to YouTube in case some people miss it. There's still time to re review it. So I'm going to take a quick uh, timestamp there. Um, all right, let's keep on going through the hands. Um, six is in the big blind here. That, that, that one I don't need to review. That's a super easy fold. 3x button. Not rejamming. We saw him call a6. The soft handler has his range as well, but yeah. Now they ace it off. Just the fold. King Queen suited. I mean, this is an obvious chain for 13 bigs. Um, have a good luck today. Since I had to play poker, I'm also having an increasing interest in the stock market as well because a lot of mental and mathematical concepts are fairly similar and I found that to be the case for a lot of poker players. Are you also invested in the markets? I may have some like crypto, but besides that, not really. No MTTs today, I'm gonna stream on the Kings channel at 6.30 p.m. today. Guys, check out twitch.tv slash pokerroomkings. Wait, I can like... Actually, just hit exclamation point kings on the channel and just follow that channel. That's where I'm online every Thursday evening for like an evening grind because... Um, yeah. You guys are also interested in me like grinding the evenings, so there you go. That's where I'm gonna be on later today. For now, I'm just gonna view some poker and I'm going out into the city to eat. Um, in the food market with some friends and then I'm back. Yeah, but I'm like in many trading, like crypto trading groups and it's just like always like so many poker players in there. Ace coin suited. I don't think we need to debate about this one either. Um, the queen check limp is fine. Ace king suited. That was the double up. That should be an easy three by jam. I mean, the check 10 in hand, this one hand was interesting. Um, I defend the big blind three ways, and then he checks and he bets. And I think it's fine to call here and then fold to that re-raise. I think, uh, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, fold at ace nine. Yeah. Depends. Why cryptos, why not real currencies? I mean, because the ROI is just much higher. For the 6 5 suited here. Easy. Just working my way through here. That is actually an interesting hand here. There's no ICM involved, but no. Did you win? Nope. Danke, Dynamo. Dynamo. <laughs> didn't win, I didn't win. I finished fourth. So we call it 3x. Call the flop. I think jamming here is somewhat fine, but not that great. I think calling is much better in position. Turn is interesting. Like, I think firing here is fine. You can fold out some hearts. As well, it's just like hands have like king jack here or like king 10 that he doesn't want to barrel off. Or like even like ace jack that he steps in the flop. And I think river give up is also somewhat fine. You really shouldn't have that many diamonds because people tend to like barrel that through. But like, Maybe it was because I busted the e2 bounty before, but all the straight draws break, and maybe he thinks I don't jam a good queen anymore, or my jam king queen pre, so I was just a little too scared to make it. Yo, Johnny Stone, man. <laughs> Cheers, man. Ace king. Yeah, that's simple. Oh, there's the ace, there's the ace queen spot, alright. There's the ace queen spot. So first I will find out if this is a profit open champ for 25 big blinds. And then we go from there. Pretty interesting. Alright Sasha, sorry, sorry for the internet. But thanks. Alright, let's paste this hand. Um So it depends now what the small blind limbs in with four five bigs as well. Um, now we gotta play with some ranges, guys. This is queen spot. Um, I think like he's gonna jam like many of these decent aces just in there. It's tough to analyze it, obviously. Like the guy's a little bit of a weirdo. 
I don't really think he has any pocket pairs. He's probably just gonna have like a bunch of suited stuff. Maybe something like this as well over here. Maybe some weaker aces, like maybe something like this as well. Not really sure what he would jam, you know? Like it's it's tough, really tough to give him a range here. Um I mean, I'm not sure what he would jam preflop, you know, like, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, we can just quickly review it. So, I'm in there with the limp. I mean, the limp, like, alright, let's analyze this spot first and then see. So what is the big brain going to jam? I mean, I will leave it at this right now, let me just experiment a little bit around. Small blind's gonna overcall, I mean, it's tough to say again what he's gonna overcall, because like, we saw him like, I think like he's just gonna... Oh, it's tough, man. Like, maybe it's gonna cause something like this for all these babies. Honestly, it's pretty tough to analyze a spot like this because the small blinds range is so, like, weird. But it's... I guess it's not that important. Just give him some calls. Let's quickly just check it. Alright, so we're losing 184 bucks right now if I would make the call there. Which is pretty decent to see. Must be, must be profitable, surely. I folded. You don't think there are traps in limp rage? Aces, kings, not with five bigs. Not with five big blinds. Um, yeah. Like, honestly, like, yeah. I mean, and this is like if the big blind champs this range, you know, I can certainly see him like jam like all this stuff as well. You know, and like more of this stuff. You know, it's just. Bottom right lies. Oh, the uptime, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord, he limped with five picks. What the fuck is the spot? I limped UDGE. He, he completed a small blind and the big blind jammed. So yeah, I think like what we clearly see here is that I shouldn't call a screen suited. Like, I mean, like we already widened his range, right? I mean, what happens if they, like, this, uh, what happens if the small blind just calls all of these? I mean, I don't think the small blind is that important to be in the hand, to be honest. Oh wait, this changed again. Yeah, I don't want him to be calling too much, to be honest. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 guys. I could be wrong. Wait. I, 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 maybe they reset it. Let's see. Now this moment overcalls these. Ah, it's the fold. All right. Well, then you have 28 bigs pre... What opening can Ace-Queen suited? I'm not really sure, man. Like, these spots are pretty interesting. These spots are really interesting. I like to watch here. You've been watching Stapes too much, limping UTG. It's not about this, obviously. I'm not sure, to be honest, like, with the Ace-Queen. Like, what it sucks if I race and somebody jams on me and they re-jam, I just lose more chips. But obviously, I get them the chance to re-jam wider. I think, like, what I'm gonna do now is just change the spot. And, um, so what I'm gonna do is here, no action, no, um, fold and fold. And now I'm actually figuring out what my jam range should look like. like. Open jam is consumed, yep, that's what I'm checking out now. So I could open jam here in this spot, and I think actually that what makes sense. Like 27 big blinds open jamming is somewhat odd, but honestly, like I I really don't think I should have a raising range in this spot generally. Like I think it's fine to have like a limping range. I don't think raise uh, having a raising raising range here is too great. It might, but yeah, I think like actually this is like where we fuck up. Like we should I should just open jam 27 bigs. I mean I'm gotta re I gotta adjust obviously the ice wing ranges because I think that would be light. Ah, oh, it's tough to say, man. I jammed 27 bigs in there. What are they going to ISO? What are they going to ISO, guys? I mean, I'm not winning that many much by jamming, so like, 
I mean, he like the eleven big blind stack is definitely gonna ice her wide if I open jam there. Like he's not gonna fold these hands. <laughs> we'll experiment a little bit around with this spot, I would say. I think he will also get it wider in there with like five big blinds. If I open jam there, like I, I think like he's just gonna like stack off with those guys. And what's the big blind calling to my open jam with? Nines, eights as well, each check suited maybe. Gonna experiment once again. So 5.11. Yeah. Let's see how. Uh, okay, we still have a profitable jam in that spot. Experiment reasoning behind the limp. Well, I didn't want to open jam 27 big blinds, and I figured I shouldn't have raising range in the spot. Because I literally can never call if they jam on me, and then I lose more chips. The thing is, like, maybe they won't jam on me that much, you know? Race call, bigger jam, bigger fold, bigger limp. I would disagree. Race call is not great for me. Okay, Limp UTGA screen is the worst you can do, guys. Come on. Like, I'm doing a study stream on a time I usually do not stream at all just to like talk to you guys about it. So, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk, let's analyze, let's give, let's give different opinions, let's consider what's good or what's bad, not type in caps. That's the best thing you can do, or that's the best thing because uh, we just try to analyze it, you know? I don't think that many of you guys in the chat have like too much of a plan generally, so yeah. What other hands do you limp? You need to balance that range as well. I think I would like, I would even limp like aces here and kings, I think. It's it's tough to analyze, man. I, I cannot really say it because like these spots don't happen that often. And like people, are, like I don't think it's that important to have a balanced limping strategy. Okay, Miller, I love you. <laughs> I'll give you a kiss. So good, man. Um. All right, let, let's work around with these ranges. Because like I'm not sure if they have it that will ice that wide. Like it's, it's a tough spot, man. Big blind might not calling ace check suited. Twenty seven big blind open jam. Like I'm not even sure if he like calls this, you know. Mm, it's a crazy spot, man. It's a crazy spot. You know, this is pretty crazy. <laughs> Man. Why not open to 2.5x? Because what I thought at least is that having raising range is not that great because I cannot even like call a 3 bet, right? So I read that like, honestly, I had 27 bigs. Like when I limp, I didn't really expect these two guys to just rejam 27 big blinds. Right? Like. Yeah, I just didn't really expect them to reach them like 20, uh, 27 bigs. Um, but would you limit, let's say, 8, 7, 7, 9, 8, you did? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't think so. It's tough to, like, analyze that, man. Like, it's tough. I just, like, like I don't know, maybe, maybe raising is better, but it's just, raising is, like, pretty damn awkward, because, like, if I raise 4, that just would have an extra... Like, you know, like, what happens in this hand if I open raise? Like, does he still rejam 27 big blinds? I mean, we don't know what he had, but, like, he's still gonna, like, jam nines, I guess. You know what I mean? So, like, I just do, like, an additional one half big blinds. How important is that for the times that, like, we don't get abused? Like, if I limp here and he just jams deuces, you know? Like, it depends. <laughs> to be honest, that's an open with ace queen suited. Oh, that's that again. You said you folded like. Was he playing the limp call if only one dude shafts and the others fold? I mean, my plan was to limp call these two guys. Damn. But then again, you're only limping strong hands when you limp like ace queen suited, yeah. But ace queen suited is a weak hand considering like my range there. It's not like you don't need to have like a balanced limping range here and there. Like, 
If I like I've limp full ace queen suited, right? It's not that I only limp aces here. Run the keg, is it a profitable call versus the big man jam and you race? No, never, never. Yeah, Sasha, that's what I usually would do. Um and yeah. I mean, 27 big blinds giving them a tight calling range, this is, right? The thing is, like, what also, like, is weird about this bot is when I limp and he completes and he jams. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. Run it, though. I mean, I can run it, but... Um, alright, let's see. Race. All in. Why is the Ah okay this is the way it works. So this is his rejamming range. Well I think that's not really the case. Mm -hmm. Interesting spot man. Interesting spot. Oh, it's tough to say, like I don't know, it's not really worth it, like running this spot because like he's not gonna rejam like twenty seven bigs that often. Uh, and I don't even. The problem is like just, it's not really like worth it to like. Um, when I limped, like I didn't expect to like get the twenty-seven big bench hand that often. But like, if it happens like too often with those deuces, like we're just losing, right? And people tend to like play differently versus the race, which is like the big advantage of the race. Um, so he's gonna like just jam those. Kings, aces, he might just induce or something. Not sure if he would re jam ace queen, to be honest. It means that we still like get a chance to play a lot of post. I mean, this is not a spot that's worth like looking into icy miser here, I don't think. But we see a clear advantage here, right? Like, if I limp and we give him like a jam range for 28, it's gonna be much wider than what I like put in here. Obviously, was this like jam range, I should never ever call. Um, but that that's like pretty obvious. But the advantage is like that he only rejams like four point two percent now, and if I limp, I think it's gonna rejam more like twelve percent. So that's like certainly an advantage of raising there. Because I think like yeah, yeah, I think that that's a big advantage of raising. Like it just takes like a whole lot more of courage there, to like rejam than limp. So. Yeah, at this point I would actually agree, like, thinking about it, that, like, we narrow down his, like, rejamming range by raising, that, like, raising becomes better than, like, limping. Thanks, Big Bear. You have to recall he was ICM holding you with that jam. I prefer open jam to be honest. Yeah, I mean open jamming is a play here, there's no doubt about this anymore. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even sure, yeah, like, yeah, you're right, like, you shouldn't even, like, consider what's best here, it's just an open jam, that's it. <laughs> Why we open shaft 27 big blinds, 5 handed, I like raise. This is something, like, that is, like, one of the most common mistakes, I think, that people have, like, certain things they will never do. Like, jam more than 20 big blinds. Oh, we should never jam more than 20 big blinds. <laughs> Stuff like that is just completely stupid. There are spots where you just want to, like, 4-bet jam 200 big blinds with ace-king. Not saying that's the standard or anything, but it makes a lot of sense here. Because like when I open jam, he's not gonna call sixes or sevens. If I limp, he's gonna rejam. If I jam, if I open, he might rejam. What if button champs and big blind isos? I gotta fold, obviously. But it's not worth like this is exactly like this is just a waste of time right now. Um, it's just an open jam, and that's 
all that we should focus on. This is like, hmm, what do what do you do on this river spot? But nobody cares because the mistake was a uh, preflop. Golden with the sub for three months. Dude. Welcome back home. <laughs> Thank you, man. I don't. I don't think jamming is the most plus EV here. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. I mean, we're just printing with open jamming there, right? I mean, look at it, like... I mean, I'm winning 44 bucks by open jamming here. But I want, like, we're gonna win more money because, like, this, this calling range will be like this. This is the guy with five big brands. Let's try this. 70 bucks we're winning right now. I also think button will be wide on this. Big blind. Tough to say again. Watching yesterday I heard so much, so many mistakes. <laughs> this is like what I like the most, like... Yeah, once again, like, I don't know. Actually, like, I do put in the work, you know, and experiment with these spots, and people are just like, oh, this is standard, oh, this is what you should always do, you should never jam over 25 picks. But yeah. What is the point of champ? Please see blinds get called when you are behind. This is not how it works, man. Like, how often do you get called there? Like, if he's... He, we get called 5% of the time there from the big blind. 5% of the time. 5 fucking percent. And then we're not always behind. <laughs> but you saw the whole calculation for open champ. We didn't see the whole calculation for raising because it doesn't work. You cannot, like, calculate, calculate your raising equity, right? Because we can, like... We cannot like count for all the scenarios. We cannot account for big blind defending and then seeing a flop, you know? We can only like analyze pre-flop spots and a post-flop. Do you have any delay? Uh, like 20 seconds, but that's just because of Twitch. Very interesting stream, even though I play cash, not many streamers show they're studying create viewer value. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thanks so much for streaming your study. You love it. Glad. You don't though, that's the thing, he d he didn't complete the keg, you can raise call 3 out of 4 players here. No, I cannot. I have to raise fold versus him and him. I have to raise fold if I open this guy jams, or this guy jams, and he really jams. It doesn't work that way, you cannot calculate it, that's not how it works. Yeah, this was the ace-queen limp. So I'm pretty sure like open jamming is the way to go here. I mean, like, open jam, ace check suited plus, ace queen off plus, and then, like, eight plus, nines plus properly. Like, like, this is gonna be my, uh, my jamming range here. Apparently. Did I put ace check in calling ranges? I don't think I gave anyone ace check to call there, nope. I think open jamming is the best. You don't put good rain god ranges in eyes. You know, You're stating it as a fact when you have a calculation in front of you, dude. Uh, you cannot calculate what you want me to calculate. It's a fact. <laughs> you cannot, like, it's not... Have you ever worked with ICMIs? Have you ever worked with like one of these programs? I don't want to sound cocky here, but it's just you cannot like analyze it. <laughs> you cannot analyze your post flop equity. You know, it's like oh, should should you limp? This is this is not a magical program that will tell you that you should limp ace queen suited because you you're limping ace queen suited for twenty bigs in a small blind versus a guy that regems seventy percent has an equity of that. And when you limp and play throw flop, you're gonna connect that off with boards, and therefore your equity is like. That many chips, you know, it's just not how it works. You can only like analyze preflop. I just been it later on fold. 
Ah, uh, folding seems really tight. <laughs> the crawl every time you make a come, just give up. I mean, I would analyze your spot if it was possible, but like, poker's not that simple. You forget that you want to induce the shorties to shove OU for their bounty. <laughs> if I open here, do you really think like the guy in the button is gonna regem like pocket sevens? No way. Been using ICM buffers since Singo and Singo Wizard. Then please tell me how I can analyze it. Please think you got over 300 views for a hand review, lol. Really? Now we have 370 views. Nice. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Like, I'm happy to calculate it and say that I'm wrong if you show me how to. But it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Like, it never works that way, right? Like, I mean, for the guys that don't understand how these programs work, it's like, you cannot... We can only see the equity of, like, getting things in preflop or how profitable it would be to jam something. But we cannot see how profitable it would be to do anything else, like... We, we could see like how profitable it would be to raise call ace and suited here, but we cannot account for like him flatting the big blind and then we're playing post flop, you know? We cannot see like how much equity we win there, like what, what has bigger energy there. You can those, do those calculations with the card runner calculator. Should be tough to do that. How does that work? Let's just like count how well my ace queen suited performs, but then it's like it depends on player tendencies that you see, like I don't know. I don't think you can like... Calculate post flop EV. I mean, obviously you can do it like with Pyrosolver or like card runner CV, I guess. But yeah, that still doesn't really work because you have to put in like many different boards and you can put in very distances in there. It doesn't calculate equity when you go to flop. Yeah, exactly. Uh. Also, I don't really want to review like 17 different spots here. I think that means you raise instead of limp, then he shouts for the CV for you, then calling with ace queen suited. I mean, then we should. It's tough to like array, like figure out his rejam range, obviously. I mean, I can do that, but I'm only doing it right now, but I really don't want to waste like, more time, so... Like, what is he re-jamming there versus my open? Ace-King? Ace-Queen? Ace-Queen is already, like, borderline. I'm not sure if he would re-jam that for 27. Like, I mean, let's go with this range, and obviously we have, like, an easy fold. If you think he's really wide here, which I don't... We still have an easy fold. Still have an easy fold. And now we can call. Three jumps, 21%. Yeah, the bounce are in the calculation. It's all about getting equity preflop. Yeah, 100% there. Yo, what's up, Yannick? I don't think race folding is a disaster, for sure. It's just tough to, like, analyze that, you know, what's better there. I think we have really shot super wide in front of these shorties pushes. I mean, we can do that. Let's say, like, I open the small blind champs. Let's see he's all in. And now we can, like, uh... Let's see. So, and once again, this is not the spot, you know, but okay. So he's on in for five, another big bang re jumps over that. Um, tough to like analyze the big bang jam range here. Uh, let's work around with that a little bit. So 
still have a tight range for the big blind. Alright, then I can still call for the bounty. Alright, what bounty did he have? He had a $1,350 bounty? But then again, like, this is really not, like, not the spot that happened. I mean, then the spot is different again, like, but, like, this is really not the spot again, like, because he just folds, right? But, I mean, we see an advantage of, like, raising here with Ace Queen, for sure. Like, if he gets it in a regen, we should, should call because his bounty is so huge. And we can, like, what happens if I make the bounty, like, 600 here? Then it becomes a fold. Alright, that's interesting. That is interesting. Don't forget that ICM has no info on the bounty, it has. We're not talking about limbs right now, or does it? Come on, bro. Yeah. Um, I'm quickly gonna copy paste it again. What are the pay jumps? I mean, there's somewhere. Maybe just maybe still have the payouts command from yesterday. You can just check it out there. No, I played this hand yesterday. So yeah, actually, I do think like giving like what we see there, see there, like that's a big advantage of raising this hand. If this exact scenario happens, but I really do like honestly, yo, be Paris driving this up, man. You up early. Guys, check out Be Paris for me, alright? I couldn't host him yesterday because Finton did a charity stream, so I changed my mind in the last second and dropped it to Finton. So hit him some follows, man, to make up for that. <laughs> Hope your session went well, man. 11 months, dude. Welcome back home. That's a long time. So, yeah, interesting spot with the ES Queen, man. The thing is, like, even, like, when... Ah, man, no, I... Wait, let me put it in the spot again. So I raise... He's all in. He's gonna ISO that. And I'm with 77 bucks. I want like 60 bucks by open champ with these queen suited, right? Let's see what happens here if I widen this range. We just give him any suited A's. More like this. We win like quite a bit. So that's like certainly a, like a big advantage here that happens. When raising. What are the disadvantages of raising here now? Like, we have to pay post flop, which is like super sucky for me. Like, because the guy with five bigs, like, if he's just out, like, I'm just, I'm just, like, if he folds the hand, it's pretty bad for me. And I think, like, obviously, he's not gonna champ that wide. Like, they give him, like, a 10% champ range, which is like, pretty reasonable, I think. Might be wider, might be, like, slightly tighter. So like the advantage of opening is if that exact scenario happens, we are winning quite a bit of money with Ace Queen suited. What is what are the downsides of raising this hand? Downsides are if he folds, and the big man calls, we have to play post flop, which is obviously not great because I really don't want to lose like any chips right now. I have 27 bigs right in the middle, and we have two short stacks. That's the downside. What's also different about the spot, which makes limping also good. If I limp here, he champs 5 bigs and he isos again, I can call Ace Queen suited, right? This is something like we shouldn't forget, like, there's not really a difference, but actually, yeah, this makes me like, like the limp again. Because like, if I limp and he gets it in, I can call. Which is much better, actually, now I like, wait, we can check that out. That's a good, like, that's another advantage of limping here. So I limp, he champs 5, and now he isos, and like, Yep, and now I win 160. Alright. But like now that I limp, his jamming range will widen up. I assume. Yeah. Both have its advantage, man. It's pretty interesting. But it makes him break up early. How are you still crying that much with the kid? It's insane. I don't know what the 5 6 the hand was. My face is taking consideration, yeah. Limping is bad, man. You're giving up the equity of your hand. What a random statement, dude. 
Love being at school. Great tip. Thanks, Henry. Cheers. You're talking about neat TV approach here. I know. I'm just a guy. I like the math. I mean, I think what it comes down to is like, we can... I think like Lim calling there is totally correct versus his rejam. But if he rejams and he calls, I can like call as well. So I don't hate limping as well. Like Limpy shows like slightly more profit in this exact scenario. So limping does make sense. I would agree with Yannick. But it's in it's a really interesting spot, man. Um So yeah, pretty much what I come down to is like I think the limp is fine. If he completes and this guy champs, I should fold. But if I limp, this guy um, limps as well, he jams, I should fold obviously. But if I limp, he jams, and now he isos and we have that big bounty up for crabs, I should call the ace queen suited. So once again, like, the advantage of limping is that we widen up his jamming range. While playing smaller pots versus both of these guys, because they're not, like he's not going to rejam 27 bigs here. But if I raise, he might just rip it in like with like the sixes, you know. I mean, he might still rip it now, but... No, he cannot read with him in there, and he might not 3-bet champ it either, but he could like 3-bet. I think just keeping the pot small makes like a lot of sense here with my stack. Honestly thinking race calling is superior, but it's a murky spot. It should be close, man. I certainly need to see more arguments for race calling here as well now, but... Yeah, the downside of race calling is that we narrow down his rejamming range and his rejamming range. But yeah. The problem with the limp is that the big blind knows that he folds every time when the small blind folds. Um, yeah. But I mean, I need to like have a balanced range here on the bases and kings, obviously. The big difference makes big blind flatting. I really get it. So yeah, I guess like the raising range is easier to balance out. out. That's a good point, knowing. But again, like this, then again, like it, it makes a decent amount of set to limp aces here. Once again, like just for the reason that we just saw, like how much money we are winning by limping. Shaving always gonna show more dollar profit than race calling. Uh, we saw the difference right here. Open timing is consumed in this spot, and that's a profit of seventy bucks, whereas like limp calling it wins us two hundred eleven. Alright, I think it's an interesting spot. I think it's an interesting spot. As the hand went down, I don't think I did a mistake. What would you do if dealer races after you limp and small bank goes all in? <laughs> Who's dealer? Like the button you mean? If I limp button champs and this guy champs, I call. So sick how long we can talk about it one spot. It's an absurd hand, man. But I like Exactly, like looking at the exact hand there, I didn't do a mistake with the ace queen, that's what matters. The limp might be the mistake, but like calling is uh, folding is perfectly fine. Limp calling makes 211 and shoves 71. Yeah, but only if the small blend rejams it, this obviously. Just end 10 seconds and talk for hours afterwards. Yeah, I'm also gonna move on now, guys, and go through the last couple of hands here, but yeah, that's the result for the. for this spot. Crazy, all in path and mix. I mean, sixes I could open jam here as well, but you know, we don't hate head race calling any of these guys, so I think like raising is fine again. We open ourselves up to get champed on here. So probably like jamming sixes here is slightly better, to be honest. But then again, like, ah, oh, this, is, this is actually interesting, because like, I mean, we have. Alright. <laughs> Alright, the button range is obviously much, like, pretty wrong with my open jam here. Uh, that is pretty sick with the bounty in the big blind. Alright, this range is also way too tight.
In my opinion, voting was bad. We just did the math. Jamming good with lower variance. I like that doesn't make any sense. We just did the math, dude. Like, the math doesn't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna talk about that later. Hey, to bounty hand. That's just because the big plan is so short and open jamming makes a lot of sense here for me. Like, you cannot forget the big plan had an insane bounty. But honestly, like, I think the button might not even call this wide. Like, this this should be a really, really nice spot to jam ultra wide here, actually. I was shuffling low variants. I mean, it doesn't make any sense what Lockhart says there. He's just saying things to say things. Bang, bang. Alright, so definitely an open jam here. What do we have here? Oh, what an interesting hand to check its serial bars. Seems pretty solid, honestly. I think at this point I could jam. But I think they like calling it and then calling that rebase and then just folding flop here is fine. So yeah. Actually, no, I want to review that. Because if, like, let's quickly check that out. Alright, Big Plant is gonna fold for now. This guy calls. Now I'm in there, and I want to no action. Because, like, I think. The hands is he's gonna call on the spot. Uh something like I mean I don't really think like he would just take these profitable regems, but it's just gonna be something like Because I think we might have a profitable like I probably just jams those. He's gonna have some traps, but he's gonna jam all of that. Just rejam everything I think there. Or raise it at least. Because like if you look at this range, and now I'm rejamming 25 bigs. Ah fuck, I cannot do a rejamming range here. It's just my calling range, right? No, this is my pushing range now, yeah. Wait, let's do that again. Now this is my calling range, this sucks. Ah, uh, you cannot analyze the spot, sadly. You can only, like, do a call here, not a rejam. Yeah. I may be a donk, but folding ace queen suit heads up versus a big stack, 30 big lines is not in my game. Yeah, that's what I mean, like, I mean, I, I like, I don't know, I just, I just don't understand your mindset. Like, I would change that. You need to be, like, open to, like, new things. Doesn't mean that, like, yeah, I mean, you can just continue playing that way, but it's just, there's so many things, like, I don't know, like, three months ago, I was like, man, it's so absurd, and it's like, so terrible, and now I'm thinking, like, hey, that's actually gonna make sense, you know? The sooner you open up your mind to, like, different input, the better it is. 
I think actually we can rejam this. Because he's gonna have like a 60% rage or something. And there's like free money, but like I cannot analyze it right now, sadly. Um, let's see what else is coming up here. Oh, was that the king queen? Oh, no. I just gotta walk there. Um, oh, yeah, it's just interesting to find out my time range in this spot. Nice. That seems not too unreasonable either. Nice, what is strong? Wow. Nice, nice, nice. I limped this hand and didn't jam it. That is an interesting hand. So find two hands now. Where is FGS? I don't really know what FGS ex FGS is exactly is. Uh, do you think it would fold something like it might fold something like this? I mean, I'm not sure how wide his opening range was in this spot, man. Let's see. Then we lose, okay. So yeah, this spot just came down to me, like, not being sure, like, how much fold equity I have if I jam. And I think, like, that's, like, what I struggled with there. Let's quickly open up the heart, see, maybe I get some stats on him, because I don't remember how wide he was in these spots. He wasn't even that wide, man. I cut off wave like 30%. Which is like not that many hands. I mean, this is a 30% range. Might be a little wide on this spot. So let's say I jam my picks in there. It's not gonna fold in the ace. He's probably folding something like these hands. Maybe. Tough to analyze it here. Let's see what, how we're doing with that. We're losing quite a bit there. Tighten up this calling range, give me a little bit more fold equity. Even though I think he's like pretty sure he's still gonna call those. Alright, like if I give him like only that, which is like maybe more fold equity than we actually have, it becomes profitable jam. But I, I don't think he would fold like 8 7 there to an 11 big band re jam. For going into the big, into the blinds in the future hands. Fun reviews for hand reviews, streams become mapping, cheers. Am I playing DFT as a scared cat? I think like that's once again like so stupid. It's not about being scared or anything. It's all about like being ICM aware, which is like a big different. It's not like it's not about money, man. Like it's just about playing right or wrong for me. That should be a yeah, that's what I mean again, like Vegas Clown. It's just like something you say, but like do not back up. I assume it's not about being scared, it's about making the correct dollar move, stupid comment. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's not a fold, I think it's a defend. Yeah, probably had many mistakes to folding ace queen suited also. Me just reviewed it, as I saw that it's the right fold, but yeah. All jet was out, I see. I mean, I learned my lesson today, like, what I learned from Twitch once again is that <laughs> you can show people the math, and they will still disagree, because... That's just not what you do, guys. That's just not what you do. So honestly, I think like my flat is fine in this spot. Um, it's close, obviously. It's close. But yeah, I went for the flat. Bricked the board and folded. But uh, that's pretty reasonable, I think. I mean, I gave him like... Now it's like a break-even jam, but he's not gonna call like these hands anymore to a jam, which he might. You know, it's tough to analyze, but... I think generally it's fine. We learn from Twitcher that focus is not that. Yeah, no, sometimes it can be a little annoying. 
Because like I, I really try to like even like help people and shit, but yeah. Yeah, let's do that first. Alright. Forty seven percent calling range. Might be a little tighter here. But I mean it's already a profitable chance, so I don't really need to look into it too much. Um I'm probably jamming any king to be honest. I'm still too wide in this spot. Let's quickly like change his calling range slightly. Because I don't think he's gonna call like All right, let's tighten it up a little more here. Let's have to know. <laughs> How about does he fold? Is that said? Okay. I know what ICM is, but I still he played way too tight in lots of spot, like flooding this king queen. This is just what I mean. Like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Twitch had a break on a professional into game title here, players. <laughs> It's just like I don't I don't understand it because like Vegas only don't know what ICM is. You know like you know what ICM is like yeah, but you don't actually know what is behind this. I'm here to talk about the hands. No, yeah, but like, ten makes a shuffle fold. Uh, not always. We can have some limps as well. I think like limping like hands like eight seven suited here when the champ's not profitable seems good. Yeah, probably Chelsea. Like. I know, it's obviously the call for uh, jam for me, like, it's close though. Yes, obviously. Alright, hey, one hand I forgot to review actually was my a7 fold in the big blind, which we're gonna do now. That's something I just remembered. I fold like a7 off to his like 13 big blind small blind jam, if you guys remember. Quickly trying to find that. There it is, I think. Yeah, 14 bigs. Let's see, this is an interesting one. I love how people disagree with what you are showing them, however I'm soaking up all the value. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I mean, I'm doing this like to help people, you know, and it's just like either you open up your mind and like try to actively talk about and say like, hmm. I mean, it's tough to argue with math, obviously, but just say, hmm, I would change that range in that regard. Like, like Chelsea, for example, he just comes in and think he would call 8-7 students, 7-6 students here for 8-5 by one no. That's such a valuable comment, like, I totally agree, right? It doesn't matter too much for the spot there, but, like, it's... That is a comment I can do it with, but it's not about, like... I know what ICM is, it doesn't work, you know? It's just... Man. You showed a queen check hard hard when Shorty shoves and he had 600 on head? No, don't remember that. Uh, solution, I think, is, like, limp fold versus big blind, limp call versus small blind rejam and big blind rejam. Race call also totally fine. I think like the difference between limp calling and race calling shouldn't be too big. Now math can always justify your game if you give a lag big stack a tight range. <sighs> Alright, I'm just not gonna like chat look at you. <laughs> this is so sad, man. Like honestly, I just wanna have like good interaction, man, but it just don't, just doesn't work. It's it's pretty upsetting. So it seems like this is a call, because he jams any two. That is not right though. He's certainly gonna limp ace and kings. Do you think he's gonna jam any two? Tough to say. I mean, we also saw him like limp early in these spots. Just gonna experiment a little bit. Wow. Still winning quite a bit here. So it seems like I did a mistake there. I mean, I'm gonna narrow down his calling range and see like how tight he has a uh, jamming range to see how tight he's actually jamming for me to make that call. Still like printing with that A7 off call. So yeah, that's probably like just a mistake there by me. That's like the first clear mistake, I think. Like we're winning way too much to fold A7 there. It was close for me. I was like, A7 suited, I'd probably call. Like, I, I would have folded A5 off. I was pretty sure about that. That was a really close one, man. 
So yeah, we really have to narrow it. Like he's only only at sixty percent now. Like, damn, we gotta narrow things down. All right, at this point, it is a clear fold. But I really don't see how he would like not jam check eight off there for fear fourteen. So yeah, I think that is a mistake. I gotta call the SM there. I think that that's the first obvious mistake I did. I think open shaming is valid with the S queen there for 27, but yeah, it's tough to say, man. Honestly, like it's tough. I think like it's obviously valid, it's profitable. Tough to argue against a profitable player. It's not about just thinking of it, it's just really Yeah, exactly, like I know I did a clear mistake there. I fucked up with the A7, you know. I don't think that's bad. Like I'm learning, but yeah, whatever. I don't think there's a problem with jamming the very bottom and very top of his range. I mean, if he only jams fifty percent, it's a fold. But like he's gonna jam every queen there. Like I took out aces and kings, but he's gonna jam ace king there pretty damn sure. You know, like, I should still call if you only jam 60%, but, like, now I don't have all these suited queens and all these suited checks, like. It's actually still somewhat close, to be honest. Keep ignoring my comments, that's why you feel that bad about Twitch chat. <laughs> Many comments, actually, Yeah, I, I, like, you're not dancing, you're just puking while you call off. Is off interesting? My line that sand is normally is not off. Yeah, that's like, it was, like, a off was just like right water there. I mean, it's, it's close, man, like, it's close, A7. Don't think it's like a terrible fold or anything, you know? I'm actually surprised, like, I, I rather call like A6U than A7 off here, and it actually like shows a little profit here again. Like my range, what I thought in this spot was like ace eight off plus and like ace five pseudo plus, but I wasn't like entirely sure. Obviously, like I wasn't happy about anything here. Are you trolling better than you noob? Oh yeah, you're probably trolling. Let's unban you. Oh man, and now you made me activate. Like this is what I think. This is what I think right there. <laughs> But yeah, I know it's just like sometimes it's like a little upsetting, you know, you do these things like what I would do, you just, just review the spots on my own, right? And then peace and rethink about it. But yeah, thank you to the guys that are nice and actually want to take away something and become profitable players or be profitable players. <laughs> ah. Well, I think that's it, guys. I think we went through the spots. I want to see, like, looking at the spots again, I feel, like, pretty happy. I shouldn't have raised the sixes. I mean, it wasn't a part where we lost anything. I actually won the hand and won more chips than if I champed, but it's still a mistake. So I should have open champed the sixes there in the cutoff. Um, limp folding a screen was correct. Also, the fold, the fold was correct. The limp wasn't necessarily correct. Um, a7 off is the close one here. 30, 30 viewers watching this and like 2% complaining chat to it. I mean, it's always like the worst people are the loudest, right? I mean, look at Trump. How do you review post flop spots? Um, different, like talking to friends. I have Pio and then doing some math with Equilab as well. What's well, that you do not have bigger bings than 5k? I mean, I, I grind the morning schedule, right? Like, there's only like how many tournaments a week with like over 5k? I mean, there's every day there's the A2 bounty. And that's it. So there's one tournament each day. If you win that, you win over 5k. And then there's, on the weekend, there's like a couple of tournaments. But really during my schedule, there's like only like, I don't know, like under 10 tournaments a day with like, where there's like four, more than 5k up top. So it's not really possible to win that that often for like 5k plus. Can you review your last 10? I already did that, Queen. It's easy jam. Yeah, I'm gonna upload it to YouTube. Maybe I'm gonna edit it slightly. Maybe I'm uploading the whole thing. We'll see. 
You won the first big one last week. Thank you for that. Nice, Pierre. GG. Glad to hear that. So I think it's a minority who have been mourning. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, as I said, like the stupid people's, people are the loudest. I wasn't trolling, but I want to see some poker. Right. Your fault was a mistake. With the E7 here? Yeah, I would agree. Ich weiß nicht, was die 5-6 suited haben, ist, Michael. Keine Ahnung. On the weekend, it's every major, 11 dollar plus. Oh yeah, like the super big majors, but yeah, okay. Sorry that we haven't won a 20k plus field yet. <laughs> I'm out, nice review below. I was only trying to explore that spot, but I wasn't trying to be negative. You see, yeah, sorry man, sometimes it just comes off wrong. All good, dude. No, the queen check suited. I still don't know what you mean. Like, 5 6 queen check suited. I don't remember the spots, guys. I do not remember. Do you remember? What time are you on later? Yeah, guys, important if you want to see some MT grind. Because, like, you are a noob. Is complaining. Uh, exclamation point kings. Just head on over to the channel right now. Thanks to Headbang. Drop the follow so I see you guys there, guys. This is a 24-7 live poker channel that they do, which is awesome. Like, there's a lot of replays going on. There's me streaming there every Thursday evening. It's cool stuff. Thanks for entering, Henry. Been babysitting nephew last three hours, man. That, that, the, the value of that, you know, your nephew running around while you study poker. I like it. I like it. You had a queen check of hearts and you folded too fast. You read us one second later. Sorry, man. I don't think I, I'm done right now. It's not necessary to check every plus EV spot. Confirmed. Do you think it's high EV to grind the morning schedule? Um, depends. Like, for me, it's high EV. For the average guy, it isn't. Um, for me, it's high EV because, like, me and Lex are the only, like, big streamers. Means like my stream has a higher V if that's the thing, you know. But like looking just at poker evening, you have like higher ROIs. But also variance is more crazy, so you need a stronger mental game. Yeah. But higher V should be in the evening for sure. There's just more like fun players and bigger fields, so your ROIs will be bigger. So yeah, guys, twitch.tv slash Pokemon Kings. I'm gonna be on the 6 30 pm CT tonight. I hope you enjoyed this little stream. I'm going out for for lunch pretty soon and then I'm on in the evening. I was a little exhausting man, it's not that easy to review spots with Twitch at one and a half hours. If you want to check out this program for free by the way, you can get it for free, do three calculations a day for free, after that you need to get the premium version for like 100 bucks a year. But I would highly recommend it to everyone that actually wants to become better at poker and look at the math. Even if you just figure out what, what you should three by champ in a small blind versus a tw uh, with 20 bigs versus a button open. Like, it helped me a lot, like, it helped me a real lot, and it also helps you to think outside of the box and get actually an edge over the player pool right now, because people just don't tend to do certain plays, because they haven't done it yet. Ah, 82 bounty, I'm not gonna do the 82 bounty. Maybe do that separately again. Uh, Dominic is at home, we're going, like, out for lunch in an hour. So yeah, definitely check out ICMizer, guys, I can really, really recommend it. And, you know, those three free searches, it's, it's certainly worth it. <laughs> And obviously those 100 bucks are worth it as well. I know this is somewhat of a long video, guys, but I just decided to upload the whole thing. Just that it's, I mean, easy to understand. I'm, I'm not really sure what I want to edit out or edit in. So, you know, for everyone that worked your way through, I hope you improved. Have a good day, guys. Peace out.